Hey, welcome back to Cobb's Q. Today, we are making hot breakfast sausage. So let me tell you, this has got a little kick to it. So <laughs> hold your horses. It's a really, really good recipe, okay? Um, take a moment, if you wouldn't mind, subscribe, help our channel grow. We really, really appreciate that. But uh, let's go ahead. We're gonna get this thing going and I don't think you're gonna be disappointed with the outcome of this recipe. Okay. We pulled our meat out of the freezer and this is 100% pork. We got five pounds today. We got about a 75, 25 mix going on uh, with the fat just that came out of the pork bed itself. We placed it in the freezer for 45 minutes and we're down to 34 degrees, 33 degrees. This is just perfect for grinding. Now, as we go through this, um, we're probably gonna be able to get through a second grinder. We're gonna start on a coarse plate then we're gonna move over to a medium plate, and then that's where we're gonna end. Um, we're gonna talk about the ingredients, what we're gonna do, and I'm gonna put something up on the screen for you, but to give you an idea, we've got cayenne in this, we've got salt, obviously, we've got rubbed sage, we have coarse ground pepper, crushed red pepper, uh, coriander, and we have MSG. This is one of my favorite store-bought sausages, and that's what's included in that sausage. We love to make a couple recipes with that particular brand. Um, we'll just leave that there. So that's what we're gonna do today. Now, the one thing that's nice about this is we don't have any cure. Since we don't have any cure, we can go ahead and fry a little bit and try it. And if we like it, we're good. We'll go ahead and we'll stuff it. If we don't, we can adjust the recipe. If you're using any kind of sodium nitrite, please, please, please don't just go fry it and then try it because it is not good for you. It can harm you. Sodium nitrite needs time to go ahead and convert into nitric oxide and you just don't want to put that in your body. Now, if you have a cure accelerator, you can do that and that will speed that up, but I would still give it a couple hours before doing so. So anyway, today, Fresh sausage, not a problem. Get a cayenne. This is gonna be awesome. Hopefully it's really good and hot, but flavorful. I know that particular brand, JD, shall we say, has uh, kind of slacked off lately. It's not the same as it used to be when he was a good fisherman out of Texas and made really good sausage. We'll just leave it there. Got our rubbed sage. We got a coriander. Okay, here we've got our MSG, got our 16 mesh black pepper, and finally we have our salt. Again, I found this recipe online, and I found it online in a couple of places, and they were all for one pound of pork. So what I did is I took the uh, measurements they did, one teaspoon, one quarter teaspoon, etc. I weighed each one of those, and then I converted that into a percentage based upon the weight of one pound of meat which I believe was 453.6 in uh, kilograms. Anyway, uh, once I did that, then I went ahead and changed that over to 2268, which is five pounds of meat, and figured out what the percentage should be, and then I weighed everything out. So again, that's where all the measurements came from in the uh, recipe. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna place a couple pieces of meat down in the hopper. Put this on. Yes, I'll have to clean that later. This one pound meat, meet your maker, it's awesome. It eats through this so fast, it's not even funny. And that is five pounds that fast. You gotta love this thing. It is so worth the money. I'm not worried about cleaning this up because I'm going to put a different plate in here. Then after I send it through the second plate, which this is still really cold, I can definitely feel it and I got the cotton gloves on so that helps. Um, when I feed it through the second plate, I'm going to throw some chipped ice through it and you know if you don't buy chipped ice that's fine. Just make ice in your fridge, go outside with a uh, bag and a uh, rubber mallet, think of your worst day and have a little fun. And then you got chipped ice, so you can feed that right through and it'll clean out any excess meat and it doesn't hurt because it keeps it cold. So let's go ahead, we're gonna get the meat back up here and then we're gonna replace our grinder with a medium plate and we'll be right back. Okay, so we've replaced the uh, grinder plate with a medium plate, we put this in. We're still at 32 degrees, 33 degrees. 
So this is fine. We can go ahead and keep um, grinding through this without a problem. We're only gonna drop a little bit in at a time, just in case. Don't get the pusher, but chances are we won't need it if we only drop in a little bit at a time. So again, it goes a little slower the second time, but if you go slow and just drop a little bit in at a time, you shouldn't need your stuffer plunger. This, this meat machine will absolutely chew right through this meat and keep everything in a nice consistency like we're looking at here. This actually looks really good for uh, breakfast sausage. Okay, and then we're gonna pour a little ice through it just to clean out the rest of the meat. And once you start seeing that come out, go ahead and turn that off. And all the ice is going to do is help keep it cold. And now we want to mix this. Now when we mix this, we want to get a good consistency. We've already got everything in it that we're going to eat. We don't need a binder or any of that nature. This is actually coming together really, really well. We want to get a really good consistency that we're going to fill in our one pound bags with the stuffer and that are gonna work out in patties or whatever we have. We actually have this amazing recipe. It's got the JD type sausage, it's got zucchini, it's got pasta and tomatoes, and it's absolutely amazing. So that's the first thing we're gonna make with this because the kids and I love that meal. That's sticking just fine. That's not going anywhere. That's, that's really good. That's what we're looking for. So what we're gonna do is we are going to fry up just a little bit. We're gonna make sure that this flavor is just what we're looking for. Okay, so we're frying it up. We're gonna let it go till it reaches 165. We're gonna give it a taste test. Just see what it tastes like. All right, let's give this a shot. See if we got close to what we want recipe wise. Oh, wow. I think we're there. It's got some heat to it. It's got the good flavor. We don't have to add anything to this. This is, this is outstanding. Okay, so let's get to stuffing. Now, I gotta say, uh, off the bat, I have this Hakka 15 pound stuffer, seven liter, I think it's 15 pounds. Um, I don't like that you can't hold it straight down and stuff, so it does this, which is a pain. Um, I also don't like, and I don't know if you can see down inside of here, but when you press, it will go all the way down to the bottom. However, it leaves at least half a pound of meat here in the tube. I'm gonna go ahead and get our sausage down in here. Now, of course, nothing happens very quickly. So in the time frame that I moved everything around, I gotta be honest, that flavor is still in my mouth from eating the sausage. Oh my God, that I, there is no questions. I will never buy it again. This is our recipe. I'm not gonna change a thing. We will be making a lot more of this. So get that down in, I'm just gonna pack it in tight. Okay, we got these wild game bags. We're gonna fill them up so they hit the one pound mark. And then we're gonna run them through our limb. Let's go ahead and get that set up with the limb. Just gonna peel this off, make sure the tape, the sticky side is up it's underneath the bar and then leave it just lay over like that. And then we just run it straight down. So let's get this on. I gotta say this is so much easier than doing casings. And that's it. Spin that nice and tight. And then we just simply run it down. And that's sealed. So there's one pound. Go ahead and do that with the rest. Somebody mentioned the other day, if you take the next size stuffer tube and put a piece of tape on it and then push it down inside of this, it'll help push everything through. So when you're stuck in this particular situation, you have a way out. And now we're gonna go ahead and put these, uh, one of them out and put the rest in the freezer and eat the rest of this. But, I gotta be honest, that flavor's still there. The whole time I've been doing that, I can still taste the sausage we ate a little bit ago. Hands down, we're doing this from now on. We are not buying another one of these JD Bass Fisherman sausages from Safeway because, let's face it, he doesn't make it anymore. This is awesome. All right, real quick, uh, we decided to go ahead and come outside. We're gonna do a taste test for the boy. He found out that I did this. He's the one that loves Jimmy Dean hot. So I know I said it tasted good last night. We're gonna go ahead and do this for him and let him see how it tastes. Okay, these are ready. Woo! 
these on the plate. They tempt out at 167. That's perfect because we wanted 165. So, cameraman, the reason we're doing this today is we want to give you the chance to stand in the smoke and tell us what you think. Oh, man. You don't have to put the whole thing in your mouth. You can I'm cut, gonna right? I'm going to eat the whole thing. Okay. <laughs> As you can tell, I love Jimmy Eating Hot. So when my dad told me that we were going to do this, I wanted it. So first day I'm here, I'm getting this. Just don't drop it. Mm. Oh, it's got a little bit of a kick. It does, right? Yeah. It's not going to be like the stuff that we get from the store. It's actually got kick. So if it says hot. Mm. Mm-hmm. How about the flavor? I mean, like I said, it's got a kick, but the flavor is also there. I mean, the... It is, isn't meat, it? Yeah. yeah I, won't I think this is going to go better than anything we've had before at a store bought. Heck yeah. No doubt about that one. So, do this. Yes. We are going to make another video, and we're going to have a substitute for the MSG. So, for those of you that may not want to put MSG in it, yet want that flavor profile. I have a natural ingredient. We're gonna order, we'll bring it back, we'll remake this with that, and we'll do a taste comparison to find out if we can get the same flavor without using the MSG. So take a moment, like, and subscribe. And thank you so much for joining us. Have a wonderful day. Oh yeah. Mm, that's freaking good.